do a disclaimer. It's obvious I am super morbidly obese. I don't want any advice. I don't need advice. I don't need doctors. I don't need anything like that. Everything that could be possibly said to me right now is already obvious, so don't waste your breath. <laughs> so we're gonna start with the fact that when I got into the doctor's office, there was nowhere for me to sit. So I had to walk from the car into the doctor's, which for me is already hard enough. And then every single one of the chairs had those arms on it, but they were definitely tiny, trust me. I had to stand for about 15 minutes. I'm not used to that. I don't stand on the regular basis. I don't stand that long on the regular basis. That's, That's really sad though. Like the fact that Amber's e in a position where she cannot stand is really, really terrible, dude. Like you should never be in a position where you cannot stand for an extended period of time. Whenever you're on the public transportation, okay? Like for me personally, I take public transportation. I live in a big city. So public transportation is usually the best way to get to certain areas unless it's like consistently under construction, which it always is. But it's, you know, it is pretty reliable for the most part. But I've had many of times where I was sitting down and an elderly Haitian woman stepped aboard that train and every seat was taken and I looked around to see if anybody would choose to sit up for this old Haitian woman and I looked up and I looked at her and I still sat down because I'm not getting up what are you talking about no I would get up obviously uh or, or there was a woman that has a child or whatever did like obviously if you have the ability to stand up and somebody doesn't have the ability to stand up if you're older or you're just with child or whatever um I think it's always appropriate to do that for somebody like Amber though she just doesn't have that option. Uh, I mean, even going as far as to say something like I, the chairs themselves with the armrests are not functional for her. Because if you guys don't know, if you're very, very fat, armrests for like me or you are fantastic, beautiful, amazing. Because you can use them to like secure yourself. You can use them to rest your hands. Obviously, armrests, you can also use them to lift yourself up, which is really, really essential for older people. Which is one of the reasons why they have hand rests is so you can, you know, propel yourself out of the chair. For somebody like Amber... To sit there and blame the medical system or blame the doctor's office for that is uh, stupid. It's very dumb. It's just, it's it's actually, I love it. I love that about Amber. It's like the, the, the ability to not take ability, to, to, to the ability to not take accountability is my favorite thing about Amber. It's my favorite lore point because it's been the most consistent part about Amber. And if one thing can be consist consistent about Amber, it's, it's the fact that she can never look at herself and take accountability for herself. Instead of blaming that she is so fat that she cannot sit down in the chair. Instead, she's going to blame the doctor's office for not having accessibility chairs for her, which is cringe as hell, but... Oh, they finally called me back. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, her face is literally white. I don't know what she did here. Usually, it's the other way around. Usually, your face is the darker, and the rest of your body is the lighter, because usually when you go outside, what tends to happen is the sun hits your face, and then the rest of your body does not get the sun because you're wearing usually a shirt or something like that. But it seems like it went reverse here. Obviously, this is makeup. She has no eyebrows. I don't know what happened here. This is, must be like the 2020 era or the 2022 era where she gained a lot of weight. That COVID era was tough to a lot of people, but it was really tough to Amber. I mean, she gained a lot of weight in that time period. If you thought somebody that was 500 pounds couldn't gain more weight than that, Amber gained a lot of weight during that time. But uh, her face seems really, really pale in comparison to the rest of her body. I'm just, And it's such a cutoff, too. It's such a drastic cutoff on this bottom portion. You guys know when you go to hospitals or you go to like doctors, go down this hallway, go down that one, turn that way, go down this way, go down that hallway. But I don't walk anymore. Like I that's it's such it's such a crazy thing to say, dude. It's so crazy to be like, I just don't walk anymore. You do know that you're a human, right? It would make sense if you were a dude without legs or they, you know, they got removed in some way. And you said, you know, I'm just a guy and I just don't walk anymore. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense because you don't have legs. But for somebody like Amber, who is a human being. To say like, yeah, I just, I just don't walk anymore is really crazy. And she just says it so forth. Like she says it with so much conviction as, <laughs> as if that's normal, as if that's okay. It's not okay. That's very weird. It's not good to not be able to walk. Okay. I grant it. And she's like 600 pounds here or something like that. So, you know, walking for her would be agonizing, obviously. I mean, people over like 300 pounds will complain about it, but being 600 pounds, which is double that again, I got to point this out. Do you know how much food this woman would have to be eating in order to maintain the size to have this problem? A lot, okay? So if, if people are going to feel bad for her, are they going to say like, oh man, it's just sucked that she can't walk? Dude, think about the amount of food this woman has to eat purposefully in order to maintain that kind of body fat percentage. A lot, okay? So when you see this woman struggling or having to stop to take a breath or like have rest stops, like pit crews, literally sitting there and dropping down in chairs so she could sit down and take like a 45-minute break to walk again, just remember... When she gets home, 
she's getting that takeout. I mean, she herself said she gets takeout at least once a day, which a lot of people have told me is actually a low ball. So she'll probably be eating two or three times a day. I don't know personally, but that seems accurate to me. Uh, if you're this size, I wouldn't be surprised if this woman was literally eating like 10,000 calories a day every day for the last five or six years. So don't feel bad. I have a Fitbit. I don't use it. I have legs. I really use them. That's, so it's just sad. It, I'm sorry. I, that is just so sad, bro. It's, I don't. <laughs> Walk like she just says this so crazily anymore like i have a fitbit i don't use it i have legs i really use them so it turns out that i am losing a lot of circulation in that leg are you for real that's what's wrong with me right now so when you don't move your body a lot of people don't realize this okay when you don't move your body you 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 either move it or lose it in a very literal sense so if you're sitting down and i know a lot of people nowadays have jobs where they're very sedentary or they sit down for the majority of the day and that's tough because you need reasons to find ways to like, you need a way to get out of the house that's gonna involve you walking, that's gonna involve you doing something because you're not gonna get that otherwise. And for somebody like Amber, it'd be very easy for her to just sit down for her entire life because I know that's what she does already. Um, and she just needs an excuse for that. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, so when I see people that go, oh, I have bad circulation in my leg, yeah, that's because you barely move in general. Of course, your body is going to be struggling to circulate blood in any other part of your body. Like, yes, dude, you don't move. And you're literally claiming you don't. I don't even know why you bought a Fitbit. I guess, like, she maybe felt motivation at one point to move. But then, like, with most things, people, people try to do certain stuff, but it's just not them. And they'll try to invest in things in order to make themselves more viable into that stuff. How many times have you seen somebody buy, like, a workout machine and they never use it. They used it maybe once or twice, and then, then it just sits in the corner. It's basically background music at that point. It's just the backdrop of your video, or it's the backdrop of your life, is to have that fitness machine, or the, the cardio device, or the elliptical, or whatever it is. Or in her case, the Fitbit, because she thought she was gonna do something, but then she realized she didn't actually wanna do it. And a lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. So I happened to mention to my doctor, how- uh, My bad, I just saw the dog back there. It's just how I sleep at night. I don't lay down when I sleep. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I sleep when I sit up and it's probably sleep apnea because I mean, look at me, you know. And she's like, yeah, that is sleep apnea. <laughs> like she was just out in front with it. And she's like, it is. It's kind of scary to me that I didn't even need to do a sleep test for a doctor to straight out tell me that. Well, you're in a different classification. You don't need to do a sleep test because you're in a different, I don't know why like so many fat people think that they deserve or like they're eligible to receive certain things when obviously you're suffering from it. That's obvious, yes, naturally, quite natural. It's like you going into a doctor's office with your arm hanging off and you're going, I think I think there might be something wrong with me. I think I don't know what it is. It's just like something's bothering me right now and I just can't feel my right arm for some reason. I just don't know what it is. Like and the doctor goes, Yeah, your arm is literally gone. Like it's like hanging on by like a piece of skin. That's Amber right now. Like what of course. Can you help me find a weight loss surgeon? Because I want weight loss surgery and I will pay for it. She's Okay, so for somebody like Amber to say that she wants weight loss surgery, it's not as simple as just saying, I want weight loss surgery and go get the weight loss surgery. There needs to be some type of initiative, unless you're going to like Turkey or something like that, and they'll just do it for you. Like they don't care, I guess. I know a lot of people have told me that, like maybe somewhere down south or somewhere in Eastern Europe, they'll totally be fine with going over there and you'll be like, yeah, I just want to get this weight loss surgery. They'll go, uh, are you free today? We'll get it done today, actually. Um, do I wash my hands? We don't have running water here, but sure, I'll get somebody to spit on my hands while I get inside your stomach and, you know, really couple it around or whatever. So, uh, here in America, though, in most westernized countries where we have, like, medical practices that have, you know, uh, rules and regulations, checks and balances, you're gonna need to actually show initiative. You're gonna, you, you can't just get the weight loss surgery because if you, if you get the weight loss surgery and nothing changes, you're just done for the rest of your life you just perpetually change something about your life that is going to be immeasurable in very drastic ways and for somebody that eats as much as amber for somebody that consumes as much food as amber that is not a practical solution so if amber did get the weight loss surgery there's a high probability that she would just die because uh first of all going under anesthesia in general at her size is life-threatening there's a possibility that you may not wake up from that and then also um if you don't change the eating habits and you get this weight loss surgery whatever bariatric surgery she was talking about at the time 
uh, that is also going to be not good because you can potentially rip your entire stomach open and have internal bleeding to, a, to an nth degree and just die like that too because you're not changing anything. You didn't do anything to actually like perpetuate this change. You just kind of went in and thought this was going to like a be all end all, which a lot of people do tend to think that if you get these weight loss surgeries, for some reason, you're going to be good. Like there's, you don't need to do anything else. You just get the surgery and you're fine for the rest of your life. Like Becky Jones literally said that. And it's not the same. It's not like that. You're going to have to do a lot of work to actually make sure that surgery is you know consistent because it, it does require a lot of effort which is one of the reasons why i say like if you're going to get the weight loss surgery make sure this is like the final method like make sure you exhausted all the all other ways of losing weight it doesn't seem like amber is even close like it doesn't seem like she even tried explained to me that i need insurance because it is hard to pay just like completely out of pocket i don't know she had like all these like terms and i felt like it was going in one ear and out the other because literally i was hoping she just yeah, well i mean that's but you know what if i'm gonna be honest with you goes in one ear and goes out the other ear can you imagine saying that about your doctor like your doctor's trying to tell you how you can get this weight loss surgery and what you can do to get it and you're just going yeah like whatever bro like you, it's not you're not even registering that's uh that's crazy like completely out of pocket i don't know she had like all these like terms and i felt like it was going in one ear and out the other because literally i was hoping she'd just be like all right let's go get that weight loss surgery she thinks that i need insurance obviously i haven't gotten it it's just been so much easier for me to just pay out, pay out of my pocket labs a few hundred dollars yeah you gotta be really bricked up on cash if you can just pay for for all this shit like that on cash bro that's crazy as hell but this is this was around the time that people were telling me that she was spending close to around three or four k a month on fast food so i wouldn't be surprised if she can just drop fat stacks on the on the right on the table and go i'll pay for whatever you need because if you got it like that then i got i guess you got it like that but it just kind of really shows me how disconnected Amber is uh, of reality, it seems like, because it's really not even as simple as being like, oh, yeah, let's get this weight loss surgery. There's a lot more stuff than just paying for it. Uh, money is the least of your worries in this scenario. It's really the consistency. It's really like, can you actually do this? So, But I love it. I love that Amber is in a position where she can just drop fat stacks. Hashtag make money. <laughs> You know, make money fuck bitches. I haven't gotten it. It's just been so much easier for me to just pay out, pay out of my pocket. Labs, a few hundred dollars. Ultrasounds, a few hundred dollars. She was talking about how her and her um, co-workers and employees, like, in the office where she works, in January, they were starting, like, a weight loss thing, just, like, within the office. And she was like, I want to invite you to join us. And every single month, you don't even have to pay. You come in every single month, we can weigh you, and you can be a part of this. I want you to be part of the weight loss journey and competition within my office meant so much to me well girls it turns out amber lied about her doctor saying this to her if she even went to yeah, the i mean that makes a lot of sense it's really fucking cringy um uh, most doctors are not going to do that because who the fuck are you they got like a million other patients and things such and so forth they just kind of want to get your problem solved and move on to the next one there is not there is so many people nowadays that are suffering from so many problems and for somebody as simple as amber who has mainly of her problems due to due to the fact that she's obese and most of her problems can literally just be alleviated from losing weight it's very easy for that person to be like, yeah, just fucking lose weight, dude. Why do you even want the weight loss surgery? That's not going to work. A doctor at all. So can we please take a second to look back on the moment Amber caught herself lying about this whole competition? It's easily one of the most satisfying moments in the Amberverse. Okay, just to point it out too, Amber is very consistent on the fact that she lies about everything. So I'm not surprised by this. What happened with the doctor's diet competition? I thought you were very excited to start that on January 1st. And I said, what are you even talking about? I actually don't know what this is from. What happened? Oh, that's crazy, bro. <sighs> See, the problem, the, <laughs> the problem with lying is that you're creating these illusions in your head at the time. And because they're not actual things that have happened to you, you don't register them as fact or they're not going to be consistent enough for you to remember in general. Because why would you? It's not something that actually happened. So when somebody calls you out on it a month, two months, three months later, uh, you're going to be like, wait, what? What are you talking about, dude? What, what does that have to do with anything? And uh, we're seeing it like <laughs> right here, dude. You were very excited to start that on January 1st. And I said, what are you even talking about? I actually don't know what this is from. What happened with the doctor's diet competition? I said, what are you talking about? Because it was never supposed to be a competition. So I guess that's what I was confu confused about. I want you to be part of the weight loss journey and competition within my office meant. Oh, shit. <laughs> I feel like maybe sometimes. Damn, dude the mental gymnastics that it, dude for amber to be looking back at herself and like she can very easily say i didn't say that but when somebody smacks her in the mouth with her own shit man i would not have put this video up but that's crazy as hell one up for amber on this dude this is a moment this is a moment of like clarity in my eyes that amber can actually look back and say like oh i did fuck up and i did say this that's crazy as hell but you know good for her bro but that's really terrible dude let's see what she says oh shit <laughs> I feel like maybe sometimes in the past. So I here comes, here comes the, here comes the cope. Here comes the, uh, here's the explaining away or the what about isms. Oh shit. 
I feel like maybe sometimes in the past, I exaggerated things uh. to make them seem more better in a way. I honestly don't know. Now, wasn't that satisfying? Anyway, let's get back to the video. And something she said to me kind of stuck with me. You're healthy. Like she, she had my charts in her hand. She was like, you're healthy. Yeah, that doctor is not somebody I would go back to. And you know what? Given the fact that she brought up that whole scenario about that, the doctor literally saying it was a, you know, a health competition or whatever it was. I'm probably sure that doctor did not say that as well. She's probably just gaslighting her audience into believing that she's a lot healthier than she actually is. Because guess what? If a doctor told me that I'm healthy, then that's like the be all end all. Like, obviously, the doctor wouldn't lie about me, wouldn't lie about that naturally. So that just must mean that I'm good, right? So anybody is saying that I'm unhealthy, you're just wrong because my doctor is right. How can my doctor be wrong? That's crazy. So she's just perpetually gaslighting people into thinking that she's healthy. But you know, in all honesty, uh, nobody believes it. Like, it's just, a, it's such a crazy thing for her to even say this stuff. And the only person it's negatively affecting is her because this is just about her here. So when she says this stuff, uh, it might be okay for the moment in the sense of like people are watching this and maybe she convinces a few people, which if you're convinced by that, you probably have some type of uh, mental derangedness or something like that, or you're very easily fooled or something like that, or you just kind of want to believe it. It's only hurting her because she's not doing anything now to solve her own problem because I guess she's diluted her brain to such a degree that maybe she believes it. And I'm sure the doctor maybe had said something of the extent of you're healthy in a, in a manner of speaking. Like somebody can easily say, wow, your nails are healthy. And then Amber might have took the healthy part and just said, my doctor told me I'm healthy. Even though the doctor never said that, they never said it like whole, like, you know, g generally speaking, they might have said it about like her fingers or something like that. And now she's going to take that because she tends to hook onto certain words or whatever and, and use those as like the overall thing, which is not true, by the way. Um, anyway. Kind of stuck with me. You're healthy. Like she, she had my charts in her hand. She was like, you're healthy, but you are obese. But okay. So if you're obese and healthy, that can, those two things cannot exist simultaneously. So I lose that doctor cut that doctor off that shit is crazy i don't know what the fuck i tell you about that that's a that's that's not a real thing we can fix that but i've always 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 had a little bit of an elevated high blood pressure it's never been super high that's something i've never experienced and again today it was elevated and i got my blood pressure taken today while <laughs> after i was done walking while i was <sighs> huffing and puffing um and it was elevated every time i've what's gone the number dude what, did she ever give out the number, dude? I would love to know what that number was, man. To like a doctor or I've gone to the ER. I've I'm actually surprised. Um, I'm pretty sure if we're going to be keeping it a buck, uh, her if she has high blood pressure, that's obvious. I mean, we're, you're literally walking around at a consistent, you know, 500, 600 pounds. Naturally, your weight is going to, you know, it, it really, really affect your blood pressure percentage and things such and so forth. So I would love to know what that number is. Uh, I would be surprised if Amberlynn didn't have high blood pressure. But, you know, the number one solution to lowering your blood pressure is cardio, like working out, losing weight. Those things are going to be the number one things and by a measurable amount as well. Like if you really wanted to take your health serious, a lot of people will look at like, you know, certain drugs, certain types of um, techniques that a doctor can do for you in order to, to alleviate it through the medical practice. But overall, uh, if you want the most effective way, uh, way of lowering your high blood pressure and things such and so forth, it would be cardio and diet those are you know diet and exercise so yeah but she's never gonna do that because that requires a lot of work i mean she's literally complaining about walking so never been diagnosed with medicine they've always told me you know it's fine it's fine it's fine today i was diagnosed a high blood pressure medicine how's your chest yeah that's really terrible dude because if okay it's not it's fine if amber gets diagnosed a blood pressure medicine that's okay but you should be looking at a more permanent solution right and that would actually just be diet and exercise and the fact that the doctor gave you that means that you probably don't look at that as like you're you're not looking at diet and exercise as a, a be all end all solution it's good you're breathing it's short yeah it's short still the lung doctor has not called her yet they said between seven to ten days and it's been what eight days now so they haven't called i told her since today's Friday. For like Amber, it's so cringy because she documents everyone else in her life along with herself and she like incorporates them in her life, okay? If that makes any sense. And I can always tell that the people that she's around don't necessarily want to be in the videos with her because it's really cringe and, you know, maybe like you just don't want to be on camera or the internet in general. It's not for everybody. But for somebody like Amber to do this as consistently as she does, I don't think she realizes that people just don't want to be in the video. And I also think that the people in her life that are on video just kind of tolerate it because it'd be more work to tell her that they don't want to be on video than it would be to tell them, you know, like otherwise. 
um, Amber is a very manipulative person and it would just be agonizing to have a conversation with this person because Amber will always find a way to pivot or gaslight or try to make it seem like you're the problem rather than her. I've seen it too many times. Amber is literally a master manipulator. Uh, maybe not for somebody like me since I've dealt with a lot of manipulation people, uh, manipulated people in my life and, um, you know, I can easily identify this stuff. I'm not like bragging or anything like that. It's not a, it's not a competition to like <laughs> identify manipulation tactics and things like that. Um, but it's really sad because I do see that many times people are in her videos that just don't want to be in videos, but she doesn't acknowledge it because she's getting something out of it. I don't know if they're open on Saturdays to call on Monday and make her own appointment. Like I don't know the doctors need to get their shit together. All of a sudden, mm. Destiny's like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. And she was sitting on the toilet and all of a sudden she said her abdomen was hurting really bad. And like my first thought was gallstones because that's what happens to me. Like my abdomen hurts so freaking bad. I'm like, baby, you should probably go to the hospital. Oh, it's I'm cringe. I hate when she says baby, bro. Oh, it's so fucking gross. Okay. Um, yeah, but uh, did you guys go to the hospital or is like she's still in the bathroom while you're <laughs> while you're talking about it? They're probably going to take like blood work and they're oh probably going to think all stones too. See her abdomen, but she said it's going a little bit to the Bro, can you just go to the car? Like I get it, content, but like Jesus Christ. Can you imagine like literally having a medical emergency? Like hold on, wait a minute. Before we get into the car, let me real quick get this shot. This is going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Trust me on this. Okay, so this is where it hurts, right, babe? Right, baby? Right? Jesus, Amber. Oh, my God. Way to show how terrible of a person you are. Left. So that's not really, like, gallstones. Like, Why what? is Amber even going, to be honest? Like, Amber is literally just a detriment in situations like this. Like, you're going to the hospital in chairs that you cannot fit. So that means you're just going to stand up. And you know what? Whenever I'm out with other people, I don't want to feel like I'm being... Like, if I need to do something for myself and somebody else is there, and I know that if I'm not with them... Things are going to get fucked up. I don't want you to come with me. Just stay home. It's fine. Like, I can do it myself. Let me do what I got to do. I'll handle my own business. You stay here. And I'm sure that in almost every scenario, Amber is always going to be a detriment. So I would never want to be in a situation with Amber Lynn or somebody like her. Someone's on your right side. So, and it's 2 a.m. by the way. So she's all hooked up to all this. She's a Man, Destiny really had that fucking Justin Bieber shit, dude. That early, that like late 2000s Justin Bieber cut. Like a needle in her arm. It like creaks me out. It makes me feel like the needle's like just tearing up her insides. I don't know. Hopefully. Amber looking kind of Sasquatch today. It's just like gas. Now I'm thinking maybe it's gas. I don't know. Her blood pressure is 127 over 72. So it's pretty normal. They gave her like this pink stuff because they think it's acid reflux. It's not helping. And I literally kind of got like an attitude and I'm like... <laughs> Really? Acid reflex? It's like... Dude, Amber is so bad, bro. Amber is such a fucking mean girl deep down, dude. And she, she's so entitled. Anytime I've ever heard... Like, okay, on video, she's not as bad because she can contour what she says and what she doesn't say. But on live streams, if you've ever seen any of her live streams, she is a, without a doubt, mean girl. Hashtag only wear pink on Wednesday type shit, dude. It's so fucking jarring to watch. I could come in here and sprain my ankle and no blame it on acid reflex. Mm. <laughs> Sure, Amber. I'm gonna tell you guys why this was the worst hospital experience ever. Okay, so when we got to the hospital, it's all about her, dude. She's so fucking like the worst hospital experience ever, dude. And this was literally your girlfriend going in for problems with her abdomen, dude. Can you imagine being this self obsessed? There was literally not a single soul in the waiting room, and I've never been to a hospital like that before. Normally, it's packed. I was like, cool, we're gonna have their undivided attention. We're actually gonna be able to talk to the doctor. Like, but when they were trying to give, uh, Destiny was trying to give blood, like, the guy had to use, like, an ear flashlight to find her vein. Like, he was just creeping me out. He was like some old man. Just that whole thing literally took about 20 minutes just to find her vein. Like, it's really not that hard. <laughs> Okay, Amber. And you know that how? Like, you know, that's like going that's like going to a mechanic's office and they're like, you know, oh man, we gotta really get in here, right? And you go, What are you talking about? Just do it, dude. It's not that hard. What are you talking about? Like it's like anybody that tries to simplify anything in life, dude. Like just do it, dude. What are you talking about? It shouldn't be that difficult. Like, I'm sorry, do you know what you're doing? Like, do you wanna step in here and do you wanna do it, Amber? Do you know how this fucking works? I don't think you know how any of this shit fucking works, okay? It's not as simple. It's like when you when somebody comes over and they go, dude. David, you suck at zombies. Like, you're just fucking ass. And you go, oh, yeah, bro. Take the controller. You go ahead and play. And they die on round one. You suck dick. Don't act like I don't know what I'm fucking doing, okay? I got way more experience than you, and you act like it's a lot more simplified than it actually is, is <laughs> really, really ignorant, okay? But you know what? That's one of uh, Amber's not so, like, I don't see that quality very often, so. Old man, just that whole thing literally took about 20 minutes just to find her vein. Like, it's really not that hard. 
I'm just being honest. True. So then after we like told a million people, like a new person would walk in. Okay, and I also want to point this out too. When you go to the emergency room, I feel like a lot of people don't realize this, but when you're in the emergency room, the entire purpose of the emergency room is to just get the emergency solved, down packed, okay? It's up to you to have the follow-up. That's it. So uh, if you're going to the emergency room for like an earache, what do you think they're going to do? They'll probably give you some medicine to hold you over. Or if it's something you can fix now and it's like a simple thing. But if it's not something simple, you're going to have to follow up. You're going to have to go to your primary care and have those doctor's appointments and talk to your primary care doctor to solve those issues for long term. Because most of the stuff, like oh, I see a lot of people just kind of go to the doctor for things that are completely irrelevant. Like I remember one time I was in the clinic with somebody or I was waiting there because I had COVID, right? And I was there. I didn't know I had COVID at the time. And this, there was a woman, and she was like, oh, honey, why are you here? And I was like, oh, I just feel, like, fucking terrible. I just feel like perpetual ass. Like, you know, my throat is dusty and all this other stuff. And I was like, why are you here? She was like, oh, my thumb hurts so bad. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. And literally, I went in her, before her, and she just stormed out when I was leaving. And she was like, this fucking clinic sucks. They're not doing shit to me. And I was like, dude, what are you expecting? Like, you're going in there for a fucking thumb pain, dude. Like, I, I, what do you want? Like, what is this guy supposed to do? He's probably just going to write you a prescription for, like, ibuprofen and get you the fuck out of there. These guys are literally just trying to shuffle people in and out. Like, deal with people that have problems and then deal with the people that don't have as many bi big problems and get those people out first. Like, what do you what do you want exactly? So, it, it, it's so, it's so crazy to me when i hear people like amber lynn say stuff like this because it's always like what are you expecting to go to your primary care and then like see if you can get some like i don't know like ultrasounds or something like that to check it out and they'd be like so why are you here so finally the doctor comes in and the doctor's like so you have a stomach ache bam blames on acid reflex like literally i can go hey, was it but was it after acid reflex if it was acid reflex you can't really say this oh there for my hair falling out or i can have an itchy eyeball and it's like gooped up with like green goo or my pinky fell off and they blame it on acid reflex. I mean, that's just what they do. Yeah, tro that's that's totally what they do, Amber. You're totally right about that. Yeah, just going in with your arm hanging off. <laughs> you got acid reflex, huh? Well, how many how many meats you been sucking on to get that acid reflex, right? Well, my arm is falling off. What are you talking? Stop being, stop. Don't, listen, we're going to fix the real problem here, okay? Let's get this acid reflex down pack. Because they're lazy. Like, I'm not trying to be mean. I don't understand. Most of them are not lazy. That's crazy, bro. Like, I don't know if you've ever been to a emergency room dude that is crazy as fuck the projection is insane dude we're literally looking at a woman that doesn't even like have a job we literally talked to the doctor for less than a minute that's it it was yeah it's an er expecting since the hospital was literally like ghost alley no one was there but us and the doctors i was expecting the main doctor to come back in and talk to her and see if she's feeling better but nope just one of his little minions came back in and we had to explain to him like it's not working so he's like okay i'll go tell the doctor so he's gone for like 10 minutes going to tell the doctor it's not working so then he comes back in and he's like he said it's gonna help it's gonna work it's just gonna take some time clearly the medicine didn't work and sent her home all fine and dandy like there was no one there they couldn't have given her any sort of test like they gave her a pregnancy test this is not somebody you want to be with if you're in a position like this and you need to actually get help dude amber is like i said a detriment dude she's literally making the situation worse way worse as well dude this is a doctor right this is this is an er doctor they probably have to deal with shit like this consistently so if it doesn't work and it continues to happen like this, then just go back, I suppose. Most of the time they just say, like, come back. Like, what are we supposed to do? We can't really do shit. Like, if they run the tests, okay, and it comes back all normal and they just give you something to, like, remedy the issue and it doesn't work, you're supposed to come back. Otherwise, what can they do? They're limited. They can't, like, op slice you open and, like, look inside to see what's going on. They're limited. They can't just do shit. And Amber Lynn being in a situation like this, dude, I can totally tell it's, like, an over uh an over possessive mom or something like that or like a, a parent that's like you know helicopter parenting everything like dude get the fuck out of here you're not helping anything you're making the situation worse whole things like i am so grateful for doctors like i do feel like sometimes they're a little greedy and i just want to say that the doctor the main doctor we saw for less than a minute what do you mean they're greedy bro by what account are they greedy Okay, that's it's all right, whatever, bro. Like a dude that went to medical school for like ten years is greedy. Sure, I mean I'm I'm sure there are greedy doctors, but like to oversimplify it like that is crazy. He's practically falling asleep. I'm sure he's had really really long hours, but I really believe that when you're a doctor, you should be a doctor not for the money, not for the privileges, not for anything other than the fact that you want to help people. And I yeah, that's like the primary reason most doctors are doctors. Like, so what are you talking about? I just feel like they didn't help us today. Yeah. Destiny has a doctor's appointment. That's why we had to wake up so early. A couple of vlogs ago, we went to the emergency room because she was having chest pains and they did a bunch of tests and everything came back fine and okay. they said it might be acid reflex but we don't think that's the case she's taking tons and tons of tums and her symptoms don't seem very acid reflex sometimes it does where she says she feels the rising 
yeah that's uh heartburn yesterday she said right here and right here was burning her and i have really bad heartburn or at least i used to get really bad heartburn and never in my life have i had burning like right there i'm thinking maybe asthma so I'm hoping her, this is like her family doctor. I'm hoping he knows what type of test to do. I love how Amber said they ran the test and nothing came back. Like it was all good. So what did you want that doctor to do at the ER? Like that dude was literally limited. Go to your primary care like you're doing right now. I don't know what the point of complaining to the degree that she was. Like I get it. It's fine. Go ahead and complain. But like the shit you were complaining about was literally irrelevant. Given the fact that the doctor literally sat there and said, yeah, it's good. Like I don't know what to tell you. Like it's all good to figure out what is causing all of this because she's also getting very, very short of breath and I've never had that with heartburn either. We went to the appointment, we came back and we crashed. We went to sleep, I was so, so tired. The appointment kind of rubbed me the wrong way, I feel like. Oh the God. doctor said that EKGs only clarify, there's like a 70% chance that there's nothing wrong with the heart. So there's another 30% chance that I'm just not liking. I personally don't understand why Destiny is having these symptoms. They don't seem heartburn related, but the doctor said, just keep taking the medicine for six to eight weeks if things get worse let them know doctors a lot of the time six to eight weeks is crazy bro jesus christ what is that like th two months want to hope the best and they say okay continue taking this medicine because it might be one thing but if it's not then we'll do the test eight weeks from now no 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 why don't you just do the test now because you could be wrong uh well you could be wrong too that's the reason why they don't want to run the test like just because a doctor could be wrong who is the professional in that situation you telling that doctor no we should run the test now that doctor's gonna look at you like oh well no we're good like i'm the professional here i got the experience like i know that you want to do this but that's completely unnecessary given the fact that it looks like this so i mean sure you could think this but with all due respect go fuck yourself like i don't know what the fuck i tell you dude i'm not running tests that don't need to be run because you want to do that um anyway my take on doctors sometimes is kind of negative because I feel like some doctors are also kind of lazy because I still remember when Yo, I lazy should never be implied when it comes to Amber Lynn, dude, like literally a person that is the personification of lazy. It, it should never, never, ever, ever come out of her mouth unless she's talking about herself. I knew, I knew I had gallstones and I went to the ER and they told me to go to this doctor and they thought it was something else and they wouldn't do any tests on me. And I'm like, no, my homie. I have gallstones and they wouldn't believe me. They wouldn't do the test. They sent me home without doing the test. <laughs> I was like, literally, I'm not leaving this place until you give me a test. And they gave me a test and I was right. I just feel like doctors need to be a little more careful. I was dying. So you were right one time and uh, now you want to just throw every single doctor under the bus? Cool. No, with gallstones a little over two years ago. To make a long story short, I pretty- There's no way that she's lied about this shit. That's crazy. I had to force the emergency room to take an ultrasound because I knew I had gallstones, but their hearts were set on, oh, you're too young to have gallstones, but I knew I had them. The attacks were horrible. After a couple tests, I was right. It came back that I had gallstones. Before I was diagnosed, I actually had a lot of gall bladder attacks, gallstones attacks, whatever you want to call them. The pain is atrocious. And for some reason, when I was diagnosed, the pain completely stopped for two years. A lot of the reason why it stopped was because I completely stopped my weight loss journey. I got gallstones because of rapid weight loss. Every time I would lose weight, the attacks would come. Every time I'd gain weight, the attacks would leave. I was sabotaging my mind so much by gaining weight. I did not want gallstone attacks. Crystal's about to take me to the ER. I'm insanely nervous. Last time I went, they told me next time I come from gallbladder pain, they're taking my gallbladder out. We've been here for like five hours. I don't know why Amber was in this era where she had these like, what are these snake bites or what do you even call these? I have no idea what you call these, but these are, this was like the worst time. I, I feel like, man, I don't like these piercings at all. They look really cringe. And I'm just now gonna be seen by the doctor before. Yep. I have no idea what's happening. I just saw like two nurses among like the other like five people I've seen. Her hair is greasy as fuck. And now I have to wait for like the head honcho doctor. And when the nurse left, she's all, I don't know if I should put an IV in you yet. <laughs> so I've been noticing weird symptoms. I'm very much like, I pay attention to my body, okay? I do. Okay, you, okay, whatever, dude. I'm not even gonna say anything about that. That's such a crazy claim from Amber. I know a lot of people like to think that I don't, but I'm smart. I. Okay, dude that's all right look dude she probably pay attention she probably pays attention to new things right new things because the way that her body is currently is just a normal thing for her which is really sad to say but that's how she probably interprets her body like she's lived with this for a very long time therefore um the issues that she has right now are just normal for her most people um that have problems they'll live with those problems for a prolonged period of time and they'll just do nothing about it because that's how their life is and it's really suck a lot of dick because 
Uh, no, you're not supposed to be dealing with consistent pain all across your body. Like the fact that you just kind of look at this as like a normal thing, kind of like living in a house with a smoke detector going off because um, the batteries are like dying. A lot of people just kind of live like that. A lot of like that's literally what it is for these people. Like they have issues, but they don't determine them to be issues because they live with them for so long that it's just normal for them. But for most other people, if you told them, hey, yeah, like when you say like, oh, my knees hurt and stuff like most people are like, what are you talking about? Like I remember one time I was talking to a guy friend. And he was driving one time. He had to pull over to the side of the road. I was, like, driving with him. And he was like, I got to stop for a second. I was like, why? What, what happened? He was like, oh, um, my eye just stopped working. And I was like, uh, well, what do you mean your eye stopped working? He's like, yeah, my left eye just sometimes, like, stops working. I was like, what are you talking about, bro? That's, like, that's insane. What do you, why would your eye stop working? He's like, I don't know. I've just been having this issue for, like, a while now. And I said, okay, well, how long is a while? And he was like, like, two years. And I was like, bro, that's literally, inc that's insane. What? No, go, that's fucking crazy. Two years? What are you talking about, dude? Y your eye isn't supposed to, like, shut off. Like, somebody just disconnects the HDMI on your fucking eyeball socket. Dude, that's terrible. And I was like, bro, you got to go to the doctor. That's terrible, bro. And then he went to the doctor, and he found out that he has, like, a really, really small, like, line on the cornea or whatever. So the doctor was like, yeah, you just have to, like, make sure you don't get into fights and things like that. And they did some tests and other stuff like that. So at least he got a diagnosis, and he hasn't had a problem since that particular point in time. But... Sometimes people will have issues, but they don't see them as big issues because they just live with these issues for so long. It just kind of becomes like a part of their life. And it's really sad because for somebody like Amber, who is chronically overweight and obese, dude, they, Amber's probably having uh, so many issues that me or you probably don't even think like, who, who could put up with issues like this? But Amber, she's probably putting up with them daily. I feel like I'm Dr. Lynn. I just know things, feel things, sense things. I noticed lately, like, when I lay down flat, my stomach kind of has like a bulge. So I was putting like two and two together and I was like, okay. So most fat people, a lot of fat people, they get hernias. And I never thought that I would be the one, right? And I recently, like a few months ago, just took a test to see if I had one and I never got my results back. Like no one ever like called me to like tell me my results. Yeah, usually you have to call them, dude. Uh, man, like a lot of doctors, dude, like you will have to call them back. It's like a job, you know what I'm talking about? You, you apply and then you call them back two or three days later, like, hey, yeah, I put in my application for this particular position. It shows incentive. It shows whatever. Uh, it's a really good practice to do too as well. If you have a doctor or whatever, you get you get your test results. If they don't tell you when you're going to get your test results, call them up. Hey, I went in for this test. What's the word with this shit? Oh, yeah, come on down. We'll give you your blood work and what else other shit. And so I figured, okay, so I guess everything's in the clear because if something would have showed up. No, that's not how that works at all, dude. Sometimes they just forget to tell you. They would have told me. I don't no. know, in my heart, I was like, something's not right. So I ended up calling to get my results because I never was told my results. And it turns out I do have a hernia, folks. The fact that I like knew that before being told that. She probably knew like, she probably knew uh, already, but she just didn't want to get the, she, she just kind of like let it slide because she just didn't want to know the truth, if that makes any sense. Like I'm 32 years old. I don't think I could go to college to be a doctor at this point, but it's like, I feel like in my past life, I was a doctor or a nurse. I don't know. I'm just like sad because I didn't even know what a hernia was until Feline had to tell me. She told me what it was and I just like broke down. I love my psychiatrist. You know, I feel very comfortable to tell her anything. And that is what I was looking for. You know, she has her little degree situation like plastered on the wall. So today is day one of actually taking my mood stabilizer. The girl said that this could cause a very bad rash that could be deathly. I was what? diagnosed with a bunch of different things. One of them is I have bipolar disorder and I figured I did. I can't take antidepressants. BPDs, dude. Best girls ever to date, man. You know, you never know. It's always a consistent fight. Yes, it's great. Having, I've, da I've dated like two girls that had BPD, dude, and it's... I'm addicted. What can I tell you? That's actually why antidepressants don't work for me is because I am bipolar. Hey guys, so it is- And also I see like a lot of people using it as a, like a, uh, uh, to remove themselves from bad situations. So it's like, it's always an excuse for them. Um, oh, I was acting really terrible to you, but like, you have to understand, like I have BPD. So like, it's different. Like you can't just expect me to be this particular type of way. I have BPD. So if I say this to you, you have to get it. Like I'm doing this to everybody. So like, you got to understand that this is just the way I am. And if you're in that position and somebody's telling you that, no, don't put up with that. That's terrible. I don't care that you have BPD. You're, that's not an excuse to treat me like shit consistently. That's terrible. Don't let anybody try to coach you into thinking that your feelings are irrelevant because they have a mental disorder. No, fuck you. I don't care. That's terrible. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here because I cannot tolerate any more of Amber Lynn. 
She is consistently always terrible, and the more I watch of her, the more I realize that she is just a terrible person that has a history of bad behavior and a ways of excusing and pivoting those bad behaviors so she never has to take accountability, which is one of the reasons why she's still is obese to this day, and she out ate the Ozempic as of recently, so it is what it is. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. I uh, appreciate everybody leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you uh, watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, Leave it down below by typing in lion because we need to grow the nature. We need to have different animals. But this is a cool lion. He's only going to eat what he needs. No, what am I talking about, dude? Lions don't eat what they need. They eat whatever the fuck they want, don't they? Uh, so, uh, yeah, well, big lion, small lions, whatever. Write it down below. They're beautiful, majestic creatures, but not as majestic as you. Not as beautiful as you. If you were a lion, your mane would be insane in the membrane. It would be thick, coarse, beautiful. Kind of like the way you are, obviously. So I know that if you were a lion or a member of the animal community, people would probably pray to you. If it was like if we were alive like two hundred thousand years ago and we saw you, we would probably make you our deity because we saw how beautiful you were and we decided that as a group we were going to use you as our new uh, cultural icon. We're going to pray to you. We're probably going to sacrifice children on spires and eat them, um, and then also sacrifice virgins to yield better crops in your name because you're just so beautiful. But anyway. Um, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.